For the Buddhist, Dhamma, synonymous with the truth, is the ultimate authority and king of kings. It is with this ultimate, timeless and temporal, transcendent and eminent authority that the Buddha identifies himself, that self in which he has taken refuge. He who sees the Dhamma sees me, and he who sees me sees the Dhamma. For no one who sees me in any shape sees me. Name and aspect are none of mine. He only who sees the eternal law sees the Buddha. If the Buddha identifies himself with the eternal law, this means that he cannot sin. He is no longer under the law, but being himself the law can only act accordingly. And we find amongst the interpretations of the epithet, thus come a truth finder, that as he says, so he does. But for those who are still wayfarers and learners, sin, a dhamma, is precisely an offense against the natural law, which represents the share of the eternal law that determines the individual's responsibilities and functions. In other words, the eternal law has its imminent correlative in every man's own law, sadhamma, by which his natural inclinations and proper functions, atannokamma, are determined, and is only greed or ambition that leads to the disparagement the nativity by which a man is normally protected. I mention this only because of currency of the erroneous opinion that the Buddha attacked the caste system. What he actually did was to distinguish the Brahman by mere birth from the true Brahman by gnosis, and to point out that the religious vocation is open to a man of any birth. There was nothing new in that. Caste is a social institution, and the Buddha was speaking mainly for those whose preoccupations are no longer social. For the householder, it is observed that his entelechy consists in the perfection of his folk. And only those occupations that injure others are condemned. The duties of a ruler are often enumerated. The Buddha himself was a royalty inasmuch as he laid down the law, and was a Brahman by a character. Brahmins are only disparaged insofar as they do not live up to the ancient norm. In many contexts, Brahman is synonymous with Arahant.